morning, everybody. Right, I'm going to talk about competence and whatever else, and there's a huge issue at the moment, and whatever else, but who in the room, right, holds an 81C or an 81D appointment? Right, that's good, lots. Right then, next question. How many people are completing CPD? That's about 50%, there or thereabouts. Right then, just to move this on even further, right, how many people are either holding or working towards a competence-based qualification? The numbers are just dropping slightly. But this is, that's fine, right, because this all is going to come together. Um, I asked the same question, I, I spoke at the Forestry Commission conference last week, and um, I asked the same questions to the guys what run quarries and borrow pits, and practically everybody put their hand up to all of them questions, right? But by the end of this presentation, they was all sat there going, ooh, actually, this is really scary stuff because we don't actually do things and we don't apply things, and ooh. But this is more comforting to understand this. So the competence. Right, what it actually is. The ability to undertake tasks and responsibilities to a recognised standard. Combine knowledge, experience and practical skills. It's good to see from the Myers group, you'd looked at that and found out and looked at where you was and all the rest of it. Understand others. There's an other qualities, as Roy was saying earlier on. Right, I'm going to come on to other qualities in a bit. Right. And you need to maintain this via CPD. That's why I asked about the CPD questions. So why do it? Right? Everyone working at a quarry must be competent for the job they're required to do. Everyone working at a quarry must be properly trained, have the appropriate experience and knowledge to do their job safely. Right? And a person's competence right, will decline if you don't use them all the time. Right? These have all come straight out of either Reg 8 or 9 of the Corey's Regs. I haven't made these up, by the way. <coughs> and it's particularly important that managers and supervisors understand their responsibilities, right? And they must also be competent to be able to do their job, right? And the degree of competence will vary from job to job, right? So what that means, my interpretation of that is, if you're running Glenn Sander, your level of competence is going to be completely different to one of Murray's um, guys who are hiding in the, in the bushes, as he says, and um, just have a one man in his dog operation. Right? Right, this is the important one. I'm going to move this out of the way because I don't. Um, Mr. Bush and his friends um, came up with a letter to send out to industry saying, actually, what does the HSE want out of the industry to maintain their demonstration? so that they're competent, 100% competence workforce. So the competence issue, that was fine. That's what we said earlier on in the presentation. But a fully competency assured industry. Now this is a huge, huge thing. And it's one that is able to demonstrate that it has the aquatic adequate arrangements in place to operate in a competent manner to ensure that health and safety of all that are affected is being looked after. All right. So to demonstrate competence, right, this is the other really important thing which I'm going to, this all links into later on. So the operator of the quarry, you've got to define the competencies required for everybody, every employee. So that doesn't matter if it's a weighbridge clerk, a shovel driver, dumper driver, quarry manager or assistant manager. Every employee, right. Take into account the national occupational standards the NOS, right? Identify any gaps in these people's competence and actively work to fill them under the appropriate supervision, right? So you can see a step change, see what, see the route, what everybody needs to go down. So assessing competence, right? Although NVQs and QCFs are fine, right? They must be capable of me, right? You've got, to, there is other routes but they've got to be capable of meeting these national occupational standards. I do know of companies out there at the moment saying, oh, I don't need to do an NVQ because I've done this, 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 and this, and this. Right, that's fine, but it's got to be mapped to, to the national occupational standards. 
And at the end of all of this, CPD is absolutely fundamental in this process. So, relevant to suppliers and contractors, so it's not just um, quarrying companies, it's people what supply quarrying companies as well. Right. Between 2000 and 2010, right, the MPA, these are MPA's numbers, Murray, so don't jump on me, please. Right. They had 30, 36 fatalities, out of which two thirds were contractors. Right. This is moving on now. And February last year, um, Cotswold Geotechnical was fined £385,000, but it would have been any more, but apparently they didn't have any money in the bank. So these are huge numbers, massive numbers. Right, I'm going to apologise because it isn't a brilliant slide to put up there, but it's the, you can't actually break it down. So the MPA members, right, have signed up to something called Safer by Competence. People who fall under the quarries regs, 99, who are directly employed, as well as contractors, have set themselves target dates to have these completed by. I ain't going to go through all of them, but just to say that 90% of um, the industry is actually signed up to this. And what is worrying, is concerning, that 30th of June this year, Directly employed people who are managers and supervisors, operatives and maintenance will have achieved a Shane VQ QCF by then. Right, that's not happened by any means. Right, but things are moving ahead. Right, the MPA also issued this competence matrix and they looked at the industry, well, their members who were part of the industry, and they said, right. These are the numbers what are needed for she and VQ's threes. That's the numbers for fours, and that's the numbers for people in fives, right? That's actually the people what's working towards them, and that levels the people's completed, right? Which don't, it doesn't look too bad, right? But it's wrong, because in our office alone, out of these 60... 60 odd people that have a Shein VQ5, we've got two people what we're directly not, we're not directly employed in the industry anymore. I'm not running any sites, officially. So these are all wrong. And you've got the, MP, um, the QCF assessors who's got a she 5 So there's 15 of them kicking around. There's two in our office, so there's 17. So all of a sudden we've lost 20% of these people what have achieved. So the industry isn't doing very good at all on that side of things. Really does need to pull its socks up. So this 100% competence workforce. <coughs> so they're looking at managing supervisors going through the SHE process, right? Because like we're not doing it properly. Companies are signing up to things, but they're not doing it, right? We need to clarify exactly what operatives are doing. The operator's com operatives competence. They're not doing that very well either, right? And this is actually being pushed out into contracting, concrete, mortar, slag, anything to do with extractives. This is a, a huge monster of a beast which the industry's got to get a grip of because we've signed up to it and everybody said, oh, we've got a competent workforce and Mr Bush and whatever else are all going around saying you, you do need to demonstrate that you can be competent. So the benefits of it, I think I'm just going to rattle through these because we all know the benefits. Um, improves she culture, reduces accident incidents, company performance and profitability, that's the big one, which is half a million quid fine earlier on, but improves public perception of our industry, right? As, as Roy said, we are professional people what are in the industry, right? We're not Flintstones, we've all qualified or whatever, or working towards good quality qualifications, so we are not Flintstones. People, we need to attract the right people into the industry. So CPD, right, necessary from, from the HSE's letter. IQ scheme, it's free to our members. Right, at the moment, from banging the drum and whatever else, we've currently got 50% of our membership actually signed up to our 
CPD scheme. That's marvellous. That is absolutely superb. We do audit, right? And we issue certificates. And we are looking at an online CPD system for our members. Going back to the other qualities, and I'm going to move on on this, right? Last year, we audited 185 people's CPDs, right? Out of which, the majority of them was all right. Some of them was <coughs> mediocre, and some was really poor. So the people who are doing CPD, right, they may think, well, oh, I'll fill this in, and, rah, rah, rah. and that's it. Marvellous. But it's not what it's all about. It's the other qualities part of this, where you have to demonstrate, hang on a minute, this is mine, which I'll come on to in a bit. So, CPD, right, is your responsibility. CPD doesn't belong to Tarmac, Hanson, Honeywell Quarry, whatever else. CPD is yours, right? This will serve as a, a permanent testimony, right, and your commitment to the industry, to your job. Maybe created as ev evidence of competence, right, which is fine. I do know that... Um, a few years ago, there was um, a fatality, and my CPD was taken away, and um, were taken away from me, and it was it was looked at to make sure I was competent to do the job that I was doing, and I was recording this. <coughs> and it is a, an absolute requirement by current and future employees, a lot of them, right? If you don't have a, a current and up-to-date CPD record, I think in about a couple of years' time, you're going to be pretty well unemployable. So, how to do it? When I say these, I'm going to run over these again and again and again because people aren't getting it right. How to do it, right? All you're doing is telling a story about your job and what you do. Think of it as a, as a book, right? Brief outline of what you do, what training you're going to need to do your job, right? And a, a consistent record of these. So going back to the HSE's letter, right, what training you need to do your job. Identify the gaps. Actively work to fill them. Right? Let's let your CPD right, make, demonstrate that you're competent. Let it, let it be a tool. Right? Where do we get it from? Right? I see more people CPD records and they say, I had a toolbox talk and I went to this and I went to that. And that is it. But CPD is a huge, wider scope of demonstrating your competence. It's not just coming to the Yorkshire Branch Safety Day at all. It's much wider than that. Right? So the corporate scheme, what we introduced in 2009, um, <coughs> where the employer commits all people with she responsibilities to be members of a professional body, maintain a CPD record, and holding or working towards competence-based qualification. Where we're at at the moment, these are all the people that's actually met all of them requirements, right? And they're doing it well. I've got to say they are doing it really well. We've got Breed and Omnia, Glendening, Zimmeries and Bretts all banging on the door. But the biggest one, Volvo and Finnings. Because they've recognised, hang on a minute, if we're going to send our technicians to your site, to maintain your load and shovel, we've got to be able to demonstrate that we're competent to do this and da 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 da. And I'm spending a huge amount of my life at the moment talking to these guys and making sure that they're right. So their competence-based qualifications are safe working for contractors within quarries and all this type of stuff. So then you've got the comfort of knowing that, hang on a minute, if I get Volvo to come in and do this, they can demonstrate that the competence, if we have an accident or something like that, I ain't gonna get slapped. Right, rather than getting Joe Bloggs who just around the corner in the white van man. So the online CPD system, what was on about? We've just spent um, somewhere in the region of about eighty thousand pounds on a CRM system um, to manage and monitor this this whole thing. It's been installed now, we're actually running with it. Um, the online CPD system is actually coming out in the next three to six months. Because we're developing it and making sure that it's proper and it's right for, for what you guys want. We're actually introducing structured and informal CPD, right? So in the future, what we're going to do, events like today, this will be structured CPD. 
right? An MPQC course will be structured CPD because it's audited and whatever else. Um, informal CPD, this is more of the on-the-job on stuff what you do. You learn it day in, day out. We can also, right, we can set objectives within this CRM system. So we can say, right, Mike Phillips Quarries, he wants all his employees to do 50 hours worth of CPD per year. 25 of structured, 25 of informal. So me as a member, right, what we'll do is we'll set it up in the, in the CRM system at six months down the line, halfway through the year. Um, it's, it's recon it recognises that you've only got four hours, so you're miles away from your 50, and it'll ping you an email. So, oh, you pull your finger out, get some CPD done. Um, this is a, a really good tool, what we're, gonna, we're investing in massively. So how does this all work then? How does this link with NVQs, QCFs and whatever else? Um, my own personal competence, right? I hold the 81C responsibility for a little quarry and exhibition in Derbyshire, which was in, held in June this year. And um, I've personally, I've got a, a She5. I had to, to be able to demonstrate that I'm competent to do this, to manage this little quarry and exhibition. And I ain't doing one again. I will never, ever, ever do a she five again. It's painful. So the, in the industry said, this is what you need. No, it is. If you do it right, it is, it's painful. But the benefits are there, which I'm going to come on to. So I had to do an NVQ, right? My NVQ is mine for life, as long as it's maintained by CPD, right? If you use your CPD properly, right, this will highlight the need for development and training requirements. So these are the gaps what you need to fill from Mr. HSE's letter. So use it as a tool, as I said. These national occupational standards what keep coming out, popping up, right? We're gonna send e emails out and notifications and whatever else, right? They'll give you direction to your, towards your CPD. Oh, hang on a minute, we've got something out, we need to learn about this. Right then, put it on my CPD, I'll go learn, learn about it, da-da-da-da-da. These are working to fill them gaps. Unit-specific areas, available through, through QCFs, which Heffin's going to talk about in a bit. Um, you don't need to do a full qualification, you might just pull units out. Right? Continuing competence ensures that NVQs and QCFs kept up to date, and they will keep you out of trouble hopefully. Moving on to the branches, right, the Yorkshire branch, for argument's sake. We set up the FIT5 um, recommended talks from the industry last year. They proved a huge success. They really did work, right? Over average, over the 13 branches, right, the actual turnout numbers was increased by about 40%. That worked. Marvellous. We're using... We're developing local training workshops using e-learning materials, which we've got. Branch member networking facility, which will be on the CRM system. So if you become a committee member, you can now you get special permissions within the CRM system and you can do all sorts of things. And we're also looking at match funding for speakers. So where's this all going? Right, so the Fit Five's ended. We've exhausted that. Who in the room has heard of Quinjack? About 50% again, right? Quinjack is the Quarries National Giant Advisory Committee, right? It meets three times a year, and um, it is a rather huge um, room full of people, very experienced, very knowledgeable, um, and they sit there and they talk about issues like Royal Sin, things get pushed through Quinjack. Underneath of that, there is eight subgroups, right? All looking at different areas of the industry, Right, and they feed information into main Quinjack, and that's when these information guidance sheets come out. Right, next question. I know I'm asking a lot of questions, but this is really, really prominent. How many people have seen the Quinjack guidance sheets come out? Now that is alarming, that's about 5% of people in the room. Right, these guidance sheets are about as up to date proper information as you will really get, right? So I'm going to change it. 
So I said, right, these outputs from Quinjack, currently they get uploaded on safequarry.com. Right, and this is going to be another question which is really, really relevant. How many people use safequarry.com? Okay. That's good. Right, but we're going to push it through the Institute of Quarrying, IOMM, JOLSOC, and IAT. Right? These these mean this information. So the opportunities by this, right? We increase the exposure of the work that Quinjack produces because not enough people out there are seeing it. Obviously, 5% of the people in this room have only put their hand up and said, oh, I, actually, I actually receive these things, right? We're going to put presentations by the people that actually developed the guidance note, and they will deliver it to, to you guys through technical events and something, which then gives opportunity for question and clarification, <coughs> right? So how many times do you receive a piece of paper and you look at it and you think, right, I've got to do that, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. And I interpret it my way. <coughs> but Murray will interpret his way and somebody will interpret their way. Get absolute clarification on this. Properly understand what they're trying to get at. Right? Um, up to date and relevant information, as I said. Right, we can gauge with other relevant institutions in this. Right? Let's let's it's not just us. Let's gather it from everywhere else, BAA and Colpro and MPA and whatever else. Right? I've already got support from the major companies. Right? We've got a tried and tested route to industry and we're, we're going to make it structured CPD. So the vision for the future. Right? The world what we're living in is changing immensely rapidly. So quick it's, un it's frightening. Right? Education, training and CPD has all converged. That's without a shadow of a doubt. Over the last two years, it's just, it's just growing even more. Lifelong is saying essential learning, right? Maintain your current qualifications by CPD. Let CPD run your, run your development and training. Fill, let CPD fill your gaps, right? And we're aiming to be kept at the core of education, training and CPD. And we've just invested somewhere in the region of about £700,000 in a new building just outside of Nottingham. State-of-the-art facilities for training, education and whatever else. And we are kept there. And that's where we want to be. Right. If you haven't listened to anything what I've said during this, right, just listen to this. So, a qualification belongs to you. It doesn't belong to Tarmac or your employer or whoever. My NVQ is mine. So, my CPD <coughs> maintains my NVQ, right? My CPD is a record of how seriously I take my role within the industry, right? Everybody, and you, and myself, we have to progress and learn to keep myself out of trouble from these guys sat down there, right? My demonstration of competence ain't going to go anywhere. Absolutely not. It's only going to, going to get any bigger. And when Mr. Bush does come in, or Mr. Noble, which position would you rather be in? Because I know which one I would. Absolutely, categorically. Any questions on that? Are there any questions for Michael? When, when did you say this online CPD is going to be? Um, it'll be between three and six months. We're, we're currently getting the CRM system to talk to our existing database. Then you said that I think that the committee members from the branches will be able to access different areas of that. Absolutely. So does that mean that when we get our records from branch meetings, at the moment I just develop a spreadsheet for all the people that are Yep. Will I be able to update that? Or is that still well, we are actually looking at issuing every member of the Institute of Quarrying a membership card with a barcode on it, right? And each of the branches, this is an aspiration for the future, each of the branches will have a barcode reader, a scanner, right? So as you come up, you scanned in to your technical evening. Whoever's running the technical evening will put together a bit of a CPD fill a CPD box in, 
So as you scanned in, that will then be uploaded onto the computer system via the internet, and it'll actually populate your CPD record for you. So you don't actually have to fill it in yourself. That's one of the things for the future we're looking at, but the system will, will cope with that. Is this, is this going to be international? Is it, uh, is it the UK best? Um, no, we are pushing it out internationally, actually. Um, I went across to New Zealand um, after Hillhead 2010, and I spoke to them about competence and demonstration of and how it benefits the industry and what we've done in the UK and so on. And um, there's a company out there called Excito, and they're working with the IOQNZ, um, and they're introducing CPD into New Zealand and then it's going to be rolled out into Australia. But I do know Kofi from the South African branch, um, they're looking at it as well. Any more questions? Uh, thank you very much, Michael. No problem. Thank you. Thank you.